It's the time of the week where we get a new tutorial to create this amazing wallpaper made by little birds, little gummy birds. As a matter of fact, you can see them right there. They are looking pretty yummy. So the first thing we're going to do is to create an icosphere and generate automatic UVs by going into the left side panel of the tool panel and then marking that option. Then we're going to press one on the numpad so that we can get into the front view and immediately go press tab and get into texture paint mode. Now I'm going to hover this area. I'm going to sh uh, F5 to send the menu at top and then I'm going to press Shift F3 to get the nodes window. And also I'm going to create a new material which is right here. Then I'm going to press Ctrl T and then it will automatically plug a texture so that we can use it right here on these slots over to the left side on the tools panel for the texture paint node. And then I'm going to create one which I'm going to be renaming Bird's Eyes Texture which is a simple texture with an with an alpha channel active and then I'm going to switch on my material to that texture now I'm going to divide my window into two separate windows because I want to switch to the UV editor and then I'm going to switch to the uh, texture that we just created now I'm going to be creating a new palette, palette and now I'm going to click over here to create a new color set. From there, the idea here is to create two pair of eye, a pair of eyes that are going to be drawn directly into this icosphere. But to do that, I need to enable symmetry. And also, let's switch the colors so we can see that we're drawing onto this surface. So if you press tab then you can go into material view you're going to get this black uh, material and also your paint in our case is white so let's turn on symmetry on the x-axis and now whatever you do on the um, on the left side or your right side of the screen you're gonna be seeing it mirror it into the left side so in our case we're going to paint over to this side this side and we're also going to create an outline, a black outline. But how do I see my black outline onto this white outline? Doesn't matter, just do it. Try to draw as closely as you can from the white color, and that's how you're gonna get it. And the reason why we don't see the color and we see everything black, it's because we're using an alpha texture. So we can see that right on the right side on the UV editor. So I have my eyes already outlined, they are looking kind of good. We're going to work with this. Now, whenever you create a texture on this side, uh, or rather as a texture on Blender, you need to save that texture, see? So we right now are going to be switching to texture mode and you can see right there your material. Now I'm going to be switching my tools onto the um, subtraction, or rather you have different uh, combinations or blending modes as we can say so that you can paint with different tools so right now I'm going to leave this on to the mix mode which is the regular mode and also you have the option to edit this image outside blender that's a nifty feature that you can find the external path to that application by let me undo this let me undo this yeah now let's try again uh, and, and that's what this external tab means that you can do a quick edit from the current view or directly apply it after you've done the changes so let me show you where it is if you press ctrl u which is the shortcut for the user uh, preferences you can see right here image editor and then you click here on this folder to locate the path the external path for the application it could be Krita it can be Photoshop it can be anything and then you can keep on drawing there 
And once you save that image, it will come back here and then you just click apply and that image will automatically refresh on the viewer. Now that's an, an amazing feature you have here in Blender. So let's try this again. That's my white, my white portion of the eyes. And now I'm going to do the outline. I'm going to draw very closely to the white color so I don't miss doing that outline. I'm doing it completely blind. Um, it doesn't matter right now because I just want you to know how to use this feature. So I'm switching to material view and then I can see my outline and I previously already drew my white but my white um, part of the texture for the eye and that and then I can switch here on the color palette the color palette I'm sorry I always get this uh, word wrong all right so it's there and now we're going to draw the pupils okay so roundy like this very good awesome since we have symmetry on anything we do on one side will get reflected onto the other side and now I'm going to draw the actual color of the eye and of course the highlight perfect looks very good very friendly because we want this gummy Tweety birds to be as friendly as they can they can look very cute on that wallpaper okay so press tab again and switch on to object mode now you will see this on your screen so let's open up a um, um, explorer view which we call the outliner let's create a light and we also have to duplicate the body two times one time we will apply the eye texture and the second time the body will just contain a material called body it doesn't have anything else and we are also going to create an empty and then we are going to apply control A we are going to apply the transformation that means we are going to zero out everything that requires transform and then we are going to drag and drop every part of the body for the bird inside that empty and we're going to rename it COG bird which stands for center of gravity underscore bird so we have two meshes and one is a slightly um, bigger than the other one the eyes are slightly bigger than the body and now I'm going to duplicate the body because we want to create the beak so I'm going to be selecting this into edit mode I'm going to press B to get box select and then I'm going to press X D which will delete all the vertices and then I'm going to be aligning these vertices so that it will resemble a beak let's scale it by pressing S the letter S in edit mode and then I'm also going to assign it a custom material custom new material cor called bird beak it's very important that you always name your materials accordingly don't just create your scenes without naming anything because you later on the days will need to remember what the material was called or if you want to append from one library to another you also need to identify them on the explorer view so this is why it's important to always rename your shaders your textures your uh, meshes basically so you can always find them all right so let's save that let's control a apply all the transformations basically zero out every translation rotations and now we can grab the COG bird empty and then with G with the letter G we can grab and move automatically so perfect we have now our little bird first bird now let's locate it onto the center of the scene and then press control A to apply transformations onto that location that's very good so why don't we see the material of the body since we are already using an alpha texture why we don't why don't we see it something's wrong so let's create just a test uh, ball right there and of course we could not see it and also let's apply control one one subdivision level to um, smooth out this uh, mesh so there you go you have it right there but we still don't see our texture so we're going to worry about that later let's create a a sphere and then enter into edit mode and then press 1 to get into vertex filter selection 
Then press B to select the lower half of the sphere. Then press X and then D, which means that it will delete all the vertices. What we want to do here is to create a giant ball which will be emitting all of our birds, of our little birds. And then I'm going to flip the, the normals because we want to see the inside emitting. Um, it's very important in Blender that the normal is pointing to the direction where you want to emit your particles since we have a parameter on the particle settings which enable us to emit from normals and th this is why we already flipped the normals over to the edit mode and then the toolbar flip normals. You can also go into mesh uh, normals flip normals for that. Now we're going to really click here by creating a particle emitter with this giant dish and now we're going to select this little bird as a particle to be emitted but how do we do that we have different objects here so we group it we make a group that's what we're doing here we select everything there the 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 empty and now on this tab I can only select objects but if you go to this other tab the group tab since we already created that group everything that it's contained within that group will be added automatically when the particle emission when the particle emitter actually it's going to start to emit so the way you do that don't forget it's ctrl G you select every object you want on your group and then press ctrl G and then press F6 which will automatically pop up a name for your group so you rename it on the pop-up. You can also access the group name in several different ways, but the most convenient one will be the F6 immediately after you pressed Ctrl G. So now I'm going to switch into the body, which what we were doing before, into the body of this little bird because we need to variate the colors automatically. And the way we're going, the way we're going to do that is by assigning a special node here on the materials but let's first locate the bird's body let me just hide for a second this um, texture the eye texture so let's try this select the bird eye and then press H which you can hide that texture okay so we know that under there the body it's in the yellow color from the material so it's there but what you need to do if you're new to blender is to add a transparent node and then mix it with a mix shader by pressing shift a you can add a mix shader and also a transparent uh, shader and you add it into this order and then you take the alpha from the texture as the factor for the mix shading that's how you create that transparency that's how you see the material um, with its correct transparency applied so this way we now see the eyes again you can press alt H and it will unhide everything and now you can see that the birds have the eyes and also the body has its corresponding new color so let's add a color ramp to the body of the bird and then I'm going to be creating different colors onto this color ramp like blue cyan white uh, maybe just a little bit of orange and if you see if I move this um, sliders on a particular location the birds get color but we don't want that we want every bird to be emitted with a, a different color from emission so we're going to add the object info node by pressing shift a and then typing object info and there we find a random port that random port on the object it's only available whenever you're emitting particles so it's very important that you know how to use it now let's switch off the gravity by going into the world uh, tab and then switching off gravity from that on we can activate another um, custom effect for the shader which can create a variation onto the birds in my case I'm going to be applying a beeble plus a math operation running it through some RGB curves and then adding both vector values by distorting the curves on the 
CRGB values of the RGB curve, I can get this kind of effect, which, which I can also mix later on with the shader if I wanted to. Like right here, the birds are looking pretty nice. They, they look, they do look like candy. And yes, we're going after that kind of look. And this is just one way you can also create a variation for your shader. Right now I'm plugging it directly so you can see the results. But let's go back to our original diffuse shader. And now we're going to create the first simulation. And for that, let's change the size just a little bit. And also, um, let's change the number to 292 particles and the seed. I switch the seed from 3 to 0. And that will automatically reset the cache uh, generation on your timeline. So we can play back and now we can see the results right here. But the behavior of the particles, it's very, very not, not so good. Right now, they are all being emitted at the same time. I'm going to be replacing this uh, emission number by 1500 particles and then I'm going to be adding a just for the sake of uh, testing purposes an external force to see if the particles get driven by this external force at any point uh, not creating much randomization so let's just forget about it delete it no matter um, what we want to do is to create some uh, attractive variations by the particles themselves. And the way you can do that is by going into physics and then tapping into fluid and also creating rotation variations inside of the parameters from the emitter. All right, this is looking much better. So you can also use voids and this will bring another factor um, to create randomization emissions from the emitter. And you have two important settings that are relations and void brain. With what these two parameters do whenever you select voids as the particle emitter is that they have a set of automatic rules to follow. In our case, we have separate and then flock. And that is giving them that behavior that you're seeing right now. Because the first thing that happens it's the emission of the emitter and then they will get separator, separated and then they will flog. That means that they will become uh, very close and then the particle continues its simulation through the timeline. So let's switch around some parameters for the light. In our case, this is the sun. It's very good. I want to I wanna create a very cold light uh, scenario. So let's go again back to the bird's eyes. If you press numpad period, that will focus the main particle. You don't select, you cannot select the, the particles once they are emitted. You select the main object, which is your particle. So I'm going to be switching this um, light for a very cold environment. And also let me uh oh now see this is what happens whenever you don't save your texture remember that texture that we painted just some minutes ago well I did not ever saved it you have to come here into the UV editor and then press F3 to save your image right there from the menu so that the texture gets saved otherwise if you make switches or changes and you do not and you did not save your texture you will lose it and that is very sad news Fortunately for us, since it was a very easy texture to create, we're going to be recreating it once again. So let's let's just do that. I'm going to um, select the eyes, the bird's eyes, right there. I'm selecting them. I'm ready to paint. I'm going to create a new texture right here from image. And then I'm going to go into vertex I'm sorry into texture paint mode okay because I want to see what we're doing and since we have the palette already selected let's draw again that's the white of the eyes perfect I'm going to be drawing this if you want to switch the size of the brush don't forget you can press F and then it will automatically show you what size the brush is so there we go, it's painted on white, 
marvelous. Now let's create the outline and also switch the colors. So I'm going to go up on my tool panel, right on my left side, side, switch to the color black, create that outline as closely as you can from the white space. So in my case, uh, right, I think, let's give them one more try, there we go. Not quite there yet, but you can take your time. Of course, this is just a quick tutorial on how to do this um, gummy looking, looking material for a wallpaper using particle effects and particle va variations. Fantastic. So let's draw the pupil once again and the highlight. All right, so it's time to save. Finally, save the image and now you're done. Open it up on Photoshop in my case and then I'm going to be outlining this um, in a better way because this is totally horrible. I don't like that. If you want something to look very tunish, make sure you always um, create an outline, a very hard outline for anything you do on the 3D viewport. That way you will get your cartoony results. So it's, it looks much better this way. And you have much controls since you have specialized 2D tools on Photoshop. So I'm going to be deleting this by lassoing and also refining this part and also this part. Perfect. It's looking great. And then I'm going to be saving this as a transparent PNG file, which I'll be using again, just like we did the last time. So don't forget to save. It's very important. So I'm back here in, on Blender and it will automatically refresh the image will update itself. So let's see how it looks. Now that our texture is back, every other bird also has its textures back. So now let's talk about switching and, oh, whoops, <laughs> that was hidden. I just click on the eye icon to bring them back. So let's talk about random variations. How do we do this? I mean, I mean, how do we locate what kind of colors or what kind of a spectrum the birds will be getting. We know it's going to be random, but there's going to be some sort of rule to follow to know what randomization is going to do to them. So we'll, we'll be talking about that in a minute. Right now, I want you to create a plane, select a vertex like I'm doing here, and then press, um, I think it was B for Beeble, and then roll your mouse wheel. If you roll your mouse wheel after immediately pressing Ctrl B, you're going to get subdivisions at that Beeble, Beeble level. So we want to create a scenario where we can put our birds and then we need to light them. Right now it's receiving world light and that's why it looks very flat, not very good. This is not very attractive. I mean, I cannot see volume there. I cannot read volume there. And your task as an artist is always to demonstrate that you do work in a 3D environment with 3D volumes, 3D depth, of course. And I'm going to be subdividing this with Ctrl-1, rather Ctrl-2 for this scenario, then applying that modifier because I want to assign it another material. But first, let's remove all lights from the set Let's remove the world color and then I'm going to be creating a plane and then I'm going to be assignating an emission shader. Fantastic. Now we have our light. I love this. I mean, this was the first thing that got me into Blender in the first place. The fact that you can pr place an emission shader on a plane and then the plane will react naturally just like a real world lightning on a, on a photograph studio. Studio, you know, that has this kind of equipment and there we have our birds being lit by the emission shader on a plane and since it's been duplicated it's emitting um, an equal amount of light everywhere but no problems let's go back into the birds and then I'm going to be assigning a principal shader just because I want them to react to light realistically let me switch back to the timeline. I'm going to be pressing play. Let's change the number to 
something like this and also let's roll or, or rather let's play into the timeline so we can see our birds being generated as particle now I'm going to be creating an empty okay because I want my camera to focus on a specific part of this image and then I'm going to be naming it as focus then I'm going to be selecting my camera let me switch this just for a second into the uh, passes tab into the color management so we can get a high contrast and then I'm going to go back into my camera which I have selected on my outliner and then on the aperture I'm going to be very I'm going to be using a very low very shallow aperture for my lens and this in turn will create a very um, hard or a very noticeable depth field on my image and since I have already created a an empty I select on the focus area as you can see right there on the right right side of the screen I'm creating an empty I'm naming it focus and then I'm going to be selecting my camera so that it will focus specifically onto that area but it's important that your camera has some parameters activated let me switch to camera view okay right there I'm going to click on display limits and then the focus object will be obviously my focus empty and now I'm creating a very um, very little f-stop number like 0 0 0 1 to see this effect and it looks marvelous with the amount of birds that are right now on the screen it really does a difference to see them in depth I'm creating now another um, fill light which is going to be an area light I'm going to be changing the bounces into three because I don't want this this light to uh, be calculated as much I don't need that many bounces and then I'm going to switch the strength somewhere around zero point um, or probably three yes just a little bit warm because that's going that's going to make a difference on all of the little birds that right now are being generated by the emitter and also let me let me change let me switch off the emitter I don't want to see it on the render it was blocking me so let's change the sampling to 256 samples okay on the final render that's what I want I don't want transparent background so I unchecked it and now let me let me change the lighting once again this warm light I want I really want to hit the birds very hard to create a rim light I need a rim light because right now every bird seems to be uh, mixing with each other so I need to find a way to create a form of differ differentiation between them so let's just play with the colors with the random colors assigned to them and also on the principal shader we want to look for that glossy look because we want them to seem to be candy material a very a glossy but at the same time very uh, like I don't know if you've seen the gummy birds but that's the kind of look we're looking for here you know jelly like I don't like to use transparency I always like to fake transparency on on jelly objects or jelly uh, materials because they tend to take too much time until the until they are rendered and that's why you can use the the coats or actually how can we say this the um, the 
it's not a gloss, gloss. It's, it's, it's a property of the material which reflects the light at a certain un angle. So that's why we have that coat, coating. Um, I don't exactly remember the parameter right now on the BSDF shader, but it's there. And you will see it if you play this video at 1x or actually at 0.5x of a speed, which is half of the speed of the normal regular playback time here on YouTube. So again, we're playing with the light because we need to create some sort of hard rim light around the birds. And right now the only things that are being reflected for these little fellows are the planes, the planes that we placed on both sides and on top. So let's see if we can create additional parameters on the material itself. Let's explore that for these particles. So let's recap. Up until, up until, all right, here it is. Here it is. Now we're seeing it exactly like we like. Very glossy. Let's save it. And let's recap. First, we did create an icosphere, and then we created a new texture, and then we went into texture paint mode. We enabled symmetry, and we directly painted over into the viewport in Blender. After that, we need to save the image so we can apply it onto our icosphere. Then we duplicated the icosphere and gave it a, a new material so that the body could have a material and it's a slightly, um, just a little bit smaller than the icosphere that contains the eye materials. And this is so that the eyes can, you know, be on top of the surface of the body. And that's what we did. So right now we can create additional parameters here on the principal shader. I'm going to be adding a normal map and then a noise texture. And then I'm going to select the normal map and then press Ctrl Shift 1. And that is going to tie directly onto the output of the material. This is why I'm looking directly what the results will be. I'm not going through the principal shader. I'm plugging a special node called Viewer to go directly onto the outside material. But now I'm going to be plugging the normal map into the principal BSDF shader and then I'm, I want to create some variations for that. So let's change the strength of the normal map. Alright, looking much better. And then I'm going to add a mix shader between the noise texture and the wave texture. Let's change the factor just a little bit because let's see how it would look if I could just mix the right amount of waves against noise. I'm, I'm going for the lollipop look and it's looking great, but right now I need more saturation. I think I need to explore that just a little bit more. Let's, let's try another setup here. Let's change the lightning just a little bit. All right, now it's looking good. Perfect. Lightning can work magic. You see that? Perfect. We also switch around some of the colors of the birds. Not so many pastel colors, but actually some very saturated colors. And here's what I was talking about before. Uh, the transmissions, which is used for uh, crystal clear materials, is all the way to one and this is why it looks very um, crystal looking and finally I'm going to be playing with the roughness because I want to get it somewhere like a gummy bear material I'm going to be saving again also I'm going to be raising the strength of the normal map and switching some of the curves some of the, some of the RGB curves which the noise texture I'm sorry which the wave texture generates I want to saturate probably the red channel or no the C channel which you know kind of affects RGB as a whole and let's switch this into the yeah mix I think it works on mix now the important part while you're creating shaders is to remember that the lower 
layer or the lower material or, or the lower connection, it's the lower layer. The top material or the top layer is the first one to be rendered or calculated in the, in the effect. So this is very important when you're creating materials so you'll know the exact order and how to mix them. All right, so finally we're going to go into the render tab. We're going to point to a directory to our image to save our image as an PNG file. And then I'm also going to be switching here uh, my size and also the output directory. I'm right now using the render tab and then I'm going to press the render button you see right there. Probably you saw me uh, clicking the animation button that is because I want to directly uh, write that keyframe onto my settings if you notice this scale was wrong so I'm going to be opening here on dimensions all the presets that I have to correct that and such matter I have 1920 by 80 18 pixels 1080 pixels and it's rendering right now our fantastic looking gummy like birds wallpaper look at that a beauty we have depth of field we have gone through some of the materials we also have managed to create different setups for the emitter and right now it's rendering it's taking a long time I didn't I did not want to forward this part because I wanted you to know that on the coming days on May 18 I'll be given a I will be giving a blender conference about anime production with 360 video plus other secrets or, and other workflows that I um, tend to implement whenever I'm working on animations and speaking of which something good and something great is coming after May so stay tuned make sure you subscribe to this channel hit the bell button and thank you very much for watching this week's video tutorial in Blender